Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work in IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this video we're looking at the Power9 servers, particularly now the top end machine, the E980, and we're looking at first live video look around the machine. But first, here's a few facts before we look at the live video of the servers. If we buy the whole machine then it's 22U high, that's 2U with a system controlled unit, you can see it at the bottom in this slide, and 1 to 4 nodes at 5U, the pitch only has 2. You end up with 16 power 9 processors at 4 GHz, that's 192 CPU cores, and with SMT8 we end up with 1,500 programs simultaneously running on the machine. And that's a 38% jump in performance over the previous generation of power 8. A massive, totally massive 64 terabytes total memory. We have 16 internal NVMe devices that we can boot from. Typically, these would be used for your VIO servers. And then many other disk options. We also have 32 PCIe Gen 4 adapters. Gen 4 means they're twice the performance of the previous generation. Or we can add more drawers if you need more adapters. It comes ready with a lot of stuff that we just expect with enterprise machines these days. PowerVM and PowerVC are built in. No cost, that means. And we also have the regular capacity upgrade on demand and enterprise pools that we can share licenses with Power 8 machines and Power 9. If you want lots more facts, go look for the E980 Fast Facts video. Here's a look at the top of the node with the lid removed. To get to see this, you need to power off the entire server. This is why we encourage people to use live partition mobility so you can evacuate the machine on these rare occasions. You'd also have to disconnect all the cables to pull out the drawer. We'll see later there's lots of cables. We can actually see in here at the top with the blue handles is the voltage regulator module supplying very clean electricity to the rest of the machine. Then we have the custom memory cards, DDR4, with the level 4 cache controllers called Centars. And then we have the four Power 9 processors. And actually, we can see the heat sinks on top. There is nothing in here that is client installed. Don't go fiddling in here. The components are fairly expensive, so use a customer engineer or a service and repair representative to do this work for you. Don't have an accident in here, you may not be insured. The only reason for opening the lid like this is to add more memory, assuming you haven't had the full complement of memory when you started up, or to replace a faulty part. Now the machine is built so that even if it has faulty parts, it will carry on running so you can plan your outage at a more convenient time. But given this enterprise class machine, faults are very rare indeed. Now the cynical people might say that I haven't got the live footage of the machine because I forgot to do with it as we were installing the machine and I really don't want to disconnect all my cables and pull the drawer out. And those cynical people would be right. Right, so here we are around the front of the machine. I've taken the covers and bezels off. This is the system control unit, and above is the first keck of up to four kecks we can have in the machine. Five big fans at the front in here. Press a little lever, pull this one around, and it will pop out. Nice, uh, rugged, reliable fan unit. Down in here we have four power supplies. You'll see that the cables are going off and over to here. Then it goes through a little tunnel around to the back of the machine. We'll see the other end in a minute. Same over the other side. Two little handles here that pop down. You see the blue touch points. You use that to hold on to to pull it out of the rack if you need to do maintenance. System control unit, three little fans. There's no power supply in the, down here because it takes the power from the first two kecks. Again, we can pop a fan out, but it's not really that exciting. The standard LED panel, the on-off button, and the indicators, and the USB 3.0 here for your use. Over here, some more, but it has a spanner sign. No, you're not meant to fiddle with these. These are for engineers. And probably in the loading the initial firmware. We'll put the covers back on. You'll notice I only have one kick uh, with this machine. Uh, it's an early machine. Uh, there may be slight differences with uh, labels and things like that, but uh, it's a fully working machine. Back to this uh, USB port. So let's plug something into that. So it goes like that. Wow. Rocket science, huh? Okay, so you're probably wondering what's on the other end of that. Let's uh, pan out a bit. And there we have one of these surprisingly expensive IBM DVD readers and writers. And we have this very cunning device in here to keep it in the door. You see it would pop out if we open the door quickly, so we have this cunning device in here to keep it in the door. Then we can close the door and it doesn't crimp the cable. Ah, oh, that's where I left my pen. Great. 
So here we are around the back of the machine. At the bottom, 2U is the system control unit, and then the 5U above is for the KEC, no, the central electronic complex. Here's a service processor, and here's the other one. They're two side by side, completely independent. The blue cover there is for the time of date batteries, they can be replaced online. Two cables going out to the two HMCs from one service processor and cables to the same HMCs from the other service processor here. Next we'll point out the power going to the system control unit. It doesn't have a power supply itself, it takes power from the KEX. So here's a little cable that comes up to the first KEC and duplicated so it comes into here from the first KEC. If we had two KECs, then one of these cables will be moved to the next KEC up to share the load. Next we'll see how the service processors are connected to the connect. Here's the little cable in here. At the bottom on the system control unit you can see the four sockets for the four nodes. Each cable is marked up very clearly. Here's one for the other service processor. Each node has three USB 3 ports in here. The first one on the lower node plugs in here. This is a pass-through cable, nothing clever in here. comes out there and goes in to the system control unit in the corner here. That then it passes straight through to the socket at the front. So that USB connector at the back on the system control unit is uh, an input port rather than an output port. It is marked up. Here are the power supplies. We saw the being plugged into the front. So they come straight through the tunnel, come out here, and then go off to the PDUs left and right. Up at the top in here, we have all the I.O. This little bank in here are the NVMe ports. Let's lift up the cable bracket so we can see a bit more light. Little blue triangle at the top, repress that, little arm comes out, we pull it out, whoop, nearly hit the camera. And it looks like an SSD. Four PCI Gen 4 slots in here in the blind socket sets and another set over here. <clears throat> we pull the little handle down, it pops out about a centimetre, then we pull it out to change the adapter. Two blue buttons on each of those cassettes and it all falls apart and we can get the adapter in and out. It literally is 20 seconds work. These are a pair of clock controllers. There's a pair in each of the nodes so that they are fully independent. We no longer need clock cables. Across the middle of the node are 16 ports. These run at 25 gigabits per second. These four join the first processor, the second processor, the third and the fourth. By connecting these between the nodes we make this into one great big SMP machine with shared memory between them. Take out the little cover and we find there's actually two ports in here so the cables are doubled. They share the load. If one fails the other will take up the whole load for reliability. Now if we had a second node we could show you the connections between the two nodes so that would be very... what? Oh. Mike's just got a delivery of a special lightweight node, so while well, we're recording, let's let's just install that right now, and we can show you a bit more about the cabling. Here he comes. Yeah, it's cool. With the help of your imagination, then we'll connect this processor here with a pair of cables coming out of here and going into the processor above. Then this port in here, a pair of cables come out of here and go into this one above. So there's four cables connecting the two processors, each at 24 gigabits per second. In practice, they'll go round the side and back in because we can't cover up the adapters and the adapter cables. So there's four going from the next processor to the one above, four from here again to the processor in the node above and fall from here going up to here. Okay, so there's four cables, four cables, four cables and four cables. And that allows the memory to flow between the two nodes at very, very high speed, thus turning two nodes into one computer. Now let's imagine we had two more nodes above the one we've added. Well, this cable in here we go into this port in here, well the pair of them would. This one will go into the node above and then this one will go into the node 2 above. 
And the same with these three of these ports will go to the three other nodes. Three of these go to the three other nodes. And three over here go to the three other nodes. And that leaves one extra port available on each keg. So, well, what do we do with that? Well, there's a couple of things we can think of. One, we could use CAPI. Two, GPUs could be connected. Or three, very high-speed remote I.O. draws. Well, that's all guesswork on my part. We'll have to wait and see what happens in practice. Well, that's the end of our video. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this or learned something, give us a thumbs up. It's always good to get feedback. If you want more of my videos, you can look here, YouTube user Nigel A.R. Griffiths, or you can subscribe and you'll be informed when I create new videos. If you want to look at the facts, go find the other video. Thanks for watching.